What's up people, Mr. Toolbox here. Happy Beta 1.5 day. Let's get to work. So Lumberyard Beta 1.5 came out yesterday. We're still kind of in that 24 hour fudge period, so we'll call this Beta 1.5 day. I happened upon it by accident while I was researching another video. Uh, saw the post on the dev blog and gave it a download. So if nothing else, it's a nice surprise and a good reminder to check the blog early and often. I will throw a link to that in the description below. In case you're worried, yes, you can download and install this alongside with beta 1.4. When you launch the wizard, there's an options button on the first page. Just click that, navigate to the path you want to install it to. Whatever path you choose, it's going to tack on a 1.5.0 to that path and then install in there. So if you want to install it right next to your 1.4 installation, just navigate to the path that the 1.4 folder is in, walk through the wizard and you'll be set. One thing to look out for if you're jumping between versions 1.5 and 1.4 or 1.5 and any earlier version is if you try to launch 1.5 immediately after you've installed it, you may see this. You'll get an attempt to connect to the game or editor has failed. If you see that, that usually means that your asset processor is still open. So if I right click this and I click show, you'll see the root is a 1.4 project. So this is an older version of the asset processor. All you need to do is come down here, right click, quit the asset processor. And then next time you launch 1.5, it'll launch the proper asset processor and things will start working. As I said earlier, I happened upon 1.5 by accident, which makes me the worst evangelist in history. But after having taken a look through the dev blog, it's actually really informative. It's super great, uh, much better than some of the documentation I've seen. So I definitely follow this blog. Um, if you're an RSS person, go ahead and subscribe to the feed so you can just kind of stay up to date. But this blog specifically about the 1.5 beta has some really good kind of high level information about what's in this release. Definitely give it a look. Next to the high level dev blog stuff, there is a proper set of release notes for this release and they are massive. Uh, so I'll link those down in the description below. Go ahead, look at them at your leisure. I'm just gonna call out some of the highlights as I see them. They'll be different than the highlights you'll see here on this release notes page. But the improvements and changes page, the fixes page, good Lord, they are long and they are detailed. So give them a look. I'm gonna spend the rest of this video taking a look at a couple of the things that are called out specifically in the dev blog, uh, namely the particle editor and the component entity system. So they're both still in preview. Particles are kind of nearing GA, they're at the latter stage and components and entities are moving further into the preview program. All signs point to Amazon really leaning on that components and entities to sort of replace the, well not replace, but supplant a lot of the features you find in the roll-up bar as it is today. So we'll take a look at some of the new stuff in there and think about how we can start using that and get familiar with how to put entities together. I also wanna quickly take a look at a couple of the sample levels that are included with the samples project. Most of them have been in the editor since before 1.5, but things like the trigger examples, the chat play examples, will give you a good feel for how people who get actually get paid to do this set that stuff up and will serve as good follow-ons for the videos I've already put together here. And since it's beta 1.5 day, no better time than now. So let's kick things off with a new addition to the samples project in 1.5. I'll click open level, expand samples. We'll find the particle sample and click open. Give that a second to load up, close my ever-present error report, and we'll be greeted with this, a really pretty campfire on the other end of this level. Got kind of a plasma lightning beam type thing. Really cool examples, but the new hotness is in the particles editor. So I'm gonna click view, open view pane, find the particle editor, and we'll click to open that. It's worth noting that in the release notes and the known issues section, high DPI monitors are still called out as not working properly. So if you see some of my text overflowing while we go through this stuff, it's a known thing. I choose to deal with it just to have the screen real estate. The workaround is obvious. It's just to switch to 1080p and everything goes back to normal. 
Uh, so if it bothers you, go ahead and do that. Just switch the resolution on your monitor back down to 1080p while you're using the Lumberyard Editor, and everything will be kosher. When you first open the Particle Editor, you'll probably see something close to this. You won't see Particles Campfire, Particles Lightning down in this list. You'll just see an empty level field here. What you need to do is click File, Import. Since you're in this project, it'll be right up at the top. The one you're looking for is component particle test.xml. So select that, click OK. That's going to load in the examples we've got out here in the viewport. I'll come back through and make a proper video about particle editor when I can spend the time to do so. But one thing I do want to call out right now is the addition in beta 1.5 of the level of detail settings for particle emitters. If I expand the campfire here and then click campfire group, this group contains all of the particle stuff that makes up this campfire here in the background. But if I choose the group down in the bottom left here, I can click add level of detail and I can have multiple levels of detail here, but this defaults to 10. And if I expand the campfire group down here, I can actually choose what renders at that distance. So say if the player's 10 meters away, I want to render just the flame. We'll kill the smoke and the embers and whatnot. So the player will be able to see that a flame is there and then add another LOD of say, well not 10, but we'll do five. Then you can start popping in some of this other stuff. So you can save cycles at a distance and then as the player gets closer to an object, have more things render to kind of optimize the world that you're creating. There are some other additions to the particle editor. I do encourage you to go read the release notes and look at the dev blog. I can't speak about them terribly intelligently right now, so I'm gonna leave them off until we get to a video dedicated to particles. The thing I'm arguably more excited about as a level builder is the additions to the component entity system. There's not really a good sample level built to experiment with that stuff, so I've created a new level, dragged in the venerable sphere controller, and let's take a look. If you open up the component palette, you'll see right off the bat it looks different than it did in 1.4. It's kind of neat. Uh, let's take a look at what we've added here. Right off the bat, something I'm excited about is just generic shapes. So if you expand shared, click shape, you'll see we've got a cylinder shape, a capsule, a box, and a sphere. They're pretty primitive, but if you're trying to block a level together instead of spending a lot of time on your static meshes, it could be a lifesaver. So let's grab a box. We'll just chuck it out here in front of our controller. And then over in the entity inspector, you may have to open these if you don't see them on screen. You'll find them all again in view, open view pane, and then down here in this list. We've got the properties of the box we just placed. So let me set that box at, we'll say 10, 10, 10. Good enough. And in true Mr. Toolbox fashion, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the area underneath that guy just so we can see it. That should be close enough. Now we've got a box in the level. I'm gonna go ahead and click in the viewport, press Control G to play, and roll right through that box. So it is there, it's just not doing anything right now. If I press escape, select my entity, and then over in the component palette, expand physics, click colliders. You'll see I have two colliders here, a mesh collider and a primitive collider. If I grab the primitive collider and just drag it into my entity, you'll see it's been added. If I click out in the viewport, press Control G again, and drive into the box. Still won't do anything, but we're getting closer. I can press escape again, come over into all categories, and the one thing we're lacking here on this entity is physics in general. So we'll grab the ominously named physics, check it over into the entity, Click the plus to the right of behavior. We'll just set this to a static body for now and click OK. Now, if I click in the viewport, press Control G, 
drive at that box, you'll see I hit an invisible wall. That's the bounds of my box stopping my player controller. So you can put components together to form exactly what you need in your level. And it really does seem from the documentation that this is the, the way they want you to go is to build your components to be exactly what you want them to be. You can then package them up into slices and reuse them in different levels, different parts of your level. It really is a nice solution to getting exactly what you want something to be and then reusing it where you need it. Something near and dear to my heart recently is in-game audio and they've made some improvements there as well. So if you click audio in the categories view, you'll see we now have audio triggers, switches, environments, and RTPC that we can tack onto entities. So if I grab an audio trigger, drop it on my entity, I can set the play and stop triggers here in the inspector. So let's say play town amb loop. I'll grab an RTPC as well, drop that in and we'll set that to amb fade. I'll also tick plays immediately just so we can see it work. I'm not a big fan that you have to type these things in. I'd rather select them. Hopefully that'll be in a later update. But if I click out in the viewport and press control G, it's barely audible, but we've got the buzz from the town emanating from our box. So now you could build an entity that makes noise and you could have another entity next to it that has a trigger volume that cues the noise things like that, you can really build some interactive audio with the component palette now. I don't want to drag on too long here, but I do want to call out two sample levels uh, before we go. So back in the welcome screen, let's click open level. In samples, I want to find the trigger sample. This was in 1.4, maybe even earlier. I just want to show it to you, uh, open up the flow graph and take a peek there. So we'll click open. It'll take a second to load. I gotta say, this level is murder on a 1080 FTW, so if you have an inferior graphics card, prepare for some pain. But it's actually pretty nice. If I click out in the viewport, press Control G, I can roll through these doors and it gives me some text up in the top left corner that kind of explains what each of these does. We'll roll through. This one's particularly cool. You have to actually enter each of these three volumes before door eight opens. So there's some cool stuff to just kind of roll around and take a look at. If I press escape and I open up the flow graph editor, open view pane, flow graph, slide it into view here. We've got all the level flow graphs down here in the bottom left corner. And you'll see all of these examples once you expand level and entities. So let's grab Eight. We'll expand that and click the door sample. Now you'll see a really well-documented layout of how they have this door logic. Door eight was the one that required the multiple trigger areas to be triggered. So you can see kind of how people who actually do this for a living wire these things together. It's a good follow on for the brief proximity trigger example that I put together. So take a look at this. If you have kind of any questions about how things should be wired together, this is a great resource that'll kind of get you where you're going. Last but not least, there's also a helpful example of Twitch chat play integration. So let's check that out real quick too. Click open level again, expand samples, and oh, it's not in samples actually, it's just below it. It's off on its own, Twitch chat basics. Let's open that up. This one's also kind of murderous on my 1080. I don't know what the deal is there. I don't know what the game's supposed to do and frankly don't care, but if you open view, open view pane, and find flow graph, again, we have the same thing. Down in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll find the one particularly interesting flow graph, which is flow graph entity one. Click that. Again, we have a pretty well-documented example of how to connect to Twitch chat see some keywords they have set up and then over on the right we've also got a cool example of how to integrate with the twitch api to do things outside of the normal chat play so this gets the number of stream viewers puts it on screen 
Really cool. Also a great follow up to the video that I did on Twitch chat play. It's uh, pretty helpful and you can kind of see how things again, people who get paid to do this, wire this stuff together. So that's going to wrap it up. Again, all those samples I showed you are in the samples project. Make sure you've got that selected in the project configurator if you want to take a look at them. I think they're pretty cool. Um, we built the new level for the component entity stuff, so you'll have to do the same if you want to give that a roll. Going forward, I'm going to jump right on to 1.5. I'm not a software hipster, but it makes sense to be making videos about kind of what's current. So that's my plan. If you have any questions, comments, drop them in the comments below. Request for other videos, maybe on some new 1.5 features. Please do let me know. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks.